much to embarrass me. Um, I've just written a few words. I'm sorry I have to refer to my notes. But um, <clears throat> I'm not really one for, you know, artsy-fartsy sayings. But however, recently, my neighbor, for some unknown reason, has started, um, has taken to writing a daily inspirational quote on a chalkboard. And the, uh, when I walk by in the mornings, you know, I read these quotes. And <clears throat> there was one that really caught my attention. It said, art is when you hear a knocking from your soul and you answer it. And this stopped me in my tracks because I immediately thought of John. His enormous passion for his art and his <clears throat> wonderful stories um, that he tells with his paintings. You know, I love a narrative in a painting. I am so bored of a painting of a dog, a painting of a horse. What John does is he tells you so much about his subject and it, it's because of his passion. But anyway, all I can say is that, you know, his, his soul but it's like an industrial <clears throat> jackhammer. It never stops knocking, and he answers every time. The man never stops painting. It's incredible. So anyway, John's art and his life is completely interwoven. He's the genuine article. He lives his art. He and Susie have traveled around the world <clears throat> in their quest to see animals and paint animals in their natural environment, and the birds, of course. Um, and the, the, not to mention the disappearing wilderness that they do they both do so much to preserve. John's list of charitable organizations on his website was way too long to to, to, um, to mention. Um, you know, he's in turn been recognized by um, with many honors. And in fact, um, it was it was the buzz of Charleston last year that you know John had recently been knighted. Um, I've got to read this by His Imperial and Royal Highness Archduke Andreas of Austria. So really, I suppose we should all call you Sir John, um, <laughs> which is great. You know, not many, not too many artists in our business get to be Sir. I'm very jealous. I would love that. Um, <laughs> and, you know, a big part of being a wildlife painter is giving back, and you know, both John and Susie have, you know, really, really answered that call. Um, in a, in a world full of talented painters, every generation throws up one or two standouts. John is one of these. He's become the artist we will follow. The artist's artist. And that's very, very special. John has it all. He's a painter, a showman, a raconteur, a teacher, a conservationist, a writer, I mean, I find it hard just to get up and go to my studio and pay pretty pictures. How do you do it? How do you find time? But uh, with all these talents, and they really are, you know, world-class talents, he also finds the time to be kind and generous and thoughtful and, and humble. You know, and not to mention wickedly funny. Most of my it seems. But, uh, and he's got that wonderful English sense of humor. Very dry, with just a little portion of cruelty. <laughs> Which I love. So, a little bit about John. He's like me, he's English. He was born the other end of the country, um, in Manchester. Um, and before he became an artist, and I didn't know this, but before John became an artist, he did many things. He was a journalist. He was, I've got to read this off now. Um, he was a magazine editor and even a local government press officer, whatever. Oh, oh, I'm actually for that. So, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. But, it, but art was always his calling. Um, it, it's funny, if it's in you, it doesn't matter what you do, it comes out, you know, you can't escape it. Um, years ago, I was at a dinner party with clients, and I just happened to glance down, and I noticed the dinner mats had, they were, I did the double take, they were Victorian street scenes, and yet there was there was something very, very John C. Lester about the style. <laughs> and and they, they, they had that flair. And apparently, these were also noticed by the owners of Milpon Press. Um, and they persuaded John to give up the Edwardian street scenes and paint animals. And this led to, gosh, over 400 editions of prints and books. And, um, <coughs> Eventually, you know, we moved to America, 
Um, and with all of this made John into one of the most famous living wildlife artists in the world. Um, as I said, he eventually moved out to America, to Florida, and still a Florida resident. And then a few years ago, very proudly became an American citizen, which I think is a great achievement. It was during it was during the Milpon period um, that I first met John. Um, it was actually at a, a trade show in England, and he was signing prints and books with Alan Hunt and I think Carl Renders. And I waited in line. I was so nervous. You know, like John was such a hero to me. And I eventually got there, and I couldn't think what to say, and I mumbled and I dribbled. It was all very embarrassing. <laughs> Had I known then just what a lovely, lovely, soft, gentle man he was, and what friends we would become, I wouldn't have been nervous. But, um, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> they say that, you know, meeting your heroes can be such a disappointment. But with John, it was the opposite. Um, John is also known for his sense of humor. He's always loved to embarrass me. I don't know why he thinks on me. I think it's because I have an English accent. <laughs> but every year, we would do a show before the James Museum, um, came into being. The, the Tom James would have a show, a very select show, intimate show, at the Raymond James Financial. And we would have a gala dinner at the end. It was a very posh gala dinner, and we're all on our best behavior, because Tom James and all his friends are there. And John loves to get out. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not a raconteur. John is a raconteur. He loves to speak. And so John would get up and make a speech, and then, every year, he would say, oh, and Matthew Gilly would just like to say things like that. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was truly hideous. <laughs> I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, one year, we were at Bride's Birds and Art. And it was, it was a fun weekend, and in the evenings we would relax in the hotel. And one particular evening, it was a karaoke evening. And I was at the bar, just having some drinks, talking to John. And it was really fun, until I, I overheard the DJ announcing that John C. Renester and Matthew Hillio were going to do a duet. It was a bloody people song. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it, I ran out of there. I got caught by Jan Martin McBride's husband, who are not me, and marched me back in. I ran again, ended up hiding under a table in the back room. And I, I think it gets worse from there, I can't tell you what happened. But they weren't as embarrassed as I was. But anyway, a couple of weeks later, John invited um, me and, and, and Julia to uh, a dinner at his house in Florida. And as we walked up the garden path, there was a sign saying, welcome to John and Susie's karaoke evening. <laughs> I, I, I was very proud of my, my Paul McCartney. Sadly, John was more of a Ringo. You know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, while John was painting all those editions, he was also having a, a series of wildly successful books published showing his work. Um, they were such an inspiration to people like me. I mean, we all bought them, we all have them. Um, and then this evolved, and John, you know, with his former life um, being a journalist and, and all the historical um, paintings that he did, the Victorian street scenes, etc., etc., John was always so much more than just a wildlife painter. Not that there's anything wrong with just being a wildlife painter, but, you know, he, he loved figurative painting um, and telling stories. And this evolved into what has now become a series of books um, talking about. Um, great stories of the classic hunters and explorers of former times. I was, when I first saw this series of paintings, I was, I was so, I hated them, I was so jealous. <laughs> they were beautiful. And you never knew, you know, all the paintings would have them, they'd be having afternoon tea, you know, sitting outside their lovely tents and not noticing the very large buffalo coming behind them. And you know he's just about to crush them all to death. Or, or a tail or a rear end of a lion as it disappears into the tent. <laughs> and you know it's going to end badly. It's back to that English as a human. But I, I loved, I loved the stories. They were so exquisitely painted, but also the narrative was so interesting. And it made you want to learn about all these wonderful historical hunters 
and explorers. Um, and also, he allowed himself the, the pleasure of collecting all the props and getting himself and his friends to dress up as all the characters. And <laughs> in fact, most of my, <laughs> a lot of those people that were crushed to death by elephants, eaten by lions, charged at by leopards, are sitting at the table. Like <laughs> so I think he did that badly. But, but apparently, John made a very, very good Teddy Roosevelt. It was the posture. Susie was telling me it. It was this. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway. So, you know, John is, I think of John as a, a, a studio painter. But he's also a fantastic plan air painter. And this is this is what I love about John. He steps out of the genre. You know, you can't, to be a wildlife artist, to be a really good wildlife artist, you've got to be a figurative painter. You've got to be a landscape painter. You've got to understand all those different disciplines. And there is no one in the business that better that is better at doing that than John. You know, he's fantastic. Um, his plan airs are, I've got, I've got lots. I'm very lucky to have traded a lot with John. And, um, in fact, John loves to trade. And again, back in the Raymond James financial days, John took a fancy to one of my paintings. And I, I, I said, well, yeah, let's talk about it at the end of the show. Well, I walked in one day, the painting had gone. I panicked, I called security. <laughs> we had a big search. This painting was never to be found. It turned up in John's booth. <laughs> he had <laughs> it. He wanted it. But the nice thing is, it has a very happy ending because I ended up with a beautiful, beautiful painting of Casey Key, actually. We were discussing it tonight on my bedroom wall, and he's got my very strange painting of a toucan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, back to his teaching, he's so generous with his time. Um, certainly inspired me to really plan air paint. Um, in fact, I met my wife at a plan air painting course run by, you know, John and Susie, so there we are. Um, John married Susie in 2000 at Yusefa Island. Um, I was lucky enough to be invited to the wedding, and it was a blast. It was so much fun. But since then, they've been inseparable. They really are, you know, Julia, uh, Julia, sorry, that's my wife. <laughs> Susie, Susie shares John's passions, uh, you know, and she's a fantastic painter in her own right. Um, and they, they are, they both, they, they both make such a wonderful team, and they are the most recognizable couple in the industry. I remember Bert, returning from Birds in Art one year, we were in Chicago Airport waiting for our plane, and then this trolley came past with John and Susie, bedecked in the safari gear, the cowboy hats, the jewelry, the tassels on their leather jackets, the, the, the long hair blowing in the wind. I don't know why there was a wind in the air to turn this. And, and everyone was watching this, this, oh my God, are they rock stars? And then I thought, how the hell, how come we all had to walk and they get the trolley? So I loved it. I just, this is John and Susie. They are phenomenal. They really are. Um, John is so deserving of this Lifetime Achievement Award. He's been such an inspiration to so many of us. He's given so much to conservation. To um, He's one of the world's greatest living wildlife artists. I'm so honored to call him a friend. Therefore, it really is with great pleasure that I get to present this award to Sir John. Thank you.
is this is a person who didn't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> in so many places. I, I, I'm honored to be here tonight. I really am. I am very honored to be have that super introduction. Because he stole all my jokes. <laughs> But I did, I did keep one. Oh, no. oh. The end of the story, where he runs away, and he hides, when we did the karaoke, and he hides out in an empty dining room <laughs> that had full table floss hanging down with nobody in there. So he hid underneath one of the tables. <laughs> he thought it was safe. <laughs> I'm wondering where he is. I'm trying to find him. Somebody said, I don't know where he went. Well, apparently, while he was under the table, a couple came into the dining room and decided to make out on the table. And it was stuck there. I was so pleased to hear that. So this is quite right. I'd always invite Matthew up. Matthew, Matthew, can I say a few words? I said, no, 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 no. In that southern English accent. Anyway, I'm very honored to be here and to see you all. Faces I know from years back and some are new. So it's a, it's a pleasure to see you all. And the main thing for me is that the Society of Animal Artists has been going as long as I've been in America and beyond. And it is such a pleasure to be here with you all and see how many of you are here tonight. And it's, it's a delight to know that the Society has gone on stronger and stronger and helping more and more young artists make a name for themselves. So, congratulations everyone. You all deserve an applause. Thank you.